All right, welcome to my first video on passive prepping. Basically taking advantage of bulk. So behind me is a pile of strawberries, obviously, and it's the middle of winter, but these came in from Florida all the way to Northern Ontario. And the store ordered too many, so they put them on sale. 99 cents a piece. 99 cents per pound. And so I bought 21 pounds, which is obviously more than I can eat at this time. And because it's the big wild year, I wouldn't eat them anyway, but my kids love strawberries and they'll store very well in the freezer. So to take advantage of that buying opportunity, we bought bulk and we are going to store. And so for us, critical storage is either drying stuff um, or putting it in our deep freeze. I have two deep freezes, plus I have a deep freeze on my refrigerator. And we're just going to squish these guys down and sort, store them as strawberry paste. So this is my Victorio food processor, food strainer it's called, I guess officially and it works really fantastic. You dump strawberries in the top, you whip your kid to crank the handle, and you get all the juice separated from all of the green tops and the mushy parts. And I'll probably actually feed these through again one more time. And then all this stuff down here, as it accumulates, we're just gonna spoon it into freezer bags and freeze it. So a pretty critical thing for me is that um, when I'm storing bulk food for long-term storage, I try to not store more than I would eat in a year. And I try not to buy things that I wouldn't already um, cook with on a regular basis. So, you know, my best advice is only stock up on the things you cook with anyway. Um, or if you're buying things that you're not cooking with regularly, then regularly work prepper meals into your um, cooking so that you are continually cycling through and you don't end up with wasting money on food that you're going to throw away. I also decided to start a prepper series because um, a good friend of mine, Chris Gilmore uh, from Changing World Project, has a really fantastic um, course out and he asked me if I would be a, an affiliate promoter and so I looked over his material and I really love what I see. Um, He's got a really engaging workbook, uh, a seven day program. You can either race the storm of the century in the seven days um, through a guided course, an e-learning course, or you can do it at your own pace. And he's got some really fabulous topics in there. Um, so, you know, it, with, uh, you know, honestly, I'm an affiliate promoter, so I would get a cut of courses. If you're interested to click on my link in the description, uh, you can check out what he's got going on over there. If you buy a course from him, you're supporting him uh, and you're also supporting me. It's the big wild year and we are looking for some money to support our endeavor, not to buy plane tickets uh, or fancy guns, but um, there are some types of knowledge and information that we really want to share with people that we don't know yet and that doesn't seem to be available. So we want to do some nutritional testing on wild foods. Um, we want to do some nutritional testing on um, wild meats, wild fats. I'm super interested to know what is in raccoon fat. So here, for example, is raccoon fat. And this, this is like, I already rendered raccoon fat. I pretty much got this after skimming soup that I made with a raccoon, there was all this extra fat. Um, but I've checked online and I cannot find any information about the um, nutritional constituents of this fat. I don't know what the difference is between, you know, how many monos and saturateds and polyunsaturateds are in there. Uh, and to get that kind of analysis done costs some money that I can't afford out of pocket. Um, and I would like to write some research grants to cover some of that, but any money that we can raise through our big wild year, we're hoping to put back into research and dissemination of information. How's the cranking going? You need more? 
Alright. If you angle this a little bit, you should be able to set that down in such a way that this poops out into the bowl. Sometimes, depending on what you're grinding, it looks like a big bear poop coming through here and then... I remember we did sausage right in, in like this. We did sausage in this? No, that was, was a something? different, that was a different kinder. Like it just similar, similar idea. Holy, look at you going. Oh, see, they dropped a strawberry, strawberry sauce. Oh, no. <laughs> how many how many pounds of strawberries have you guys already done? Is that your fourth one? The fourth one? No, that's, this is our, like, sixth, I think. Holy smokes. Three, four, five. Your fifth 15. one. This is our fifth. Fifteen. Nice. So this is what five pounds of strawberries processes down to and soon we'll bag it up. What I'll do is um, we'll switch this. So I'll give you guys a fresh empty one and I'll start bagging up all that juice. Okay, we're not even done this. What much. is that? That's not a strawberry. That is a freak of nature. No, that's a strawberry. That's huge. It's ginormous. Yeah. You gonna eat that one? Yeah. I want to right. have a bite. <laughs> I know I got one. Please. Share it. It's like a pizza. <laughs> I also, uh, buy my freezer bags in bulk there's 150 bags there and it is way more economical than just buying them 20 bags at a time another thing i like to do is when possible is to store things in uniform amounts so i'll probably do two cups two cups per bag one cup so maybe while I'm scooping here I'll give a quick big wild year update it is February the 28th so it is day 59 of our big wild year which is 365 days of eating only wild food so we have been eating only wild food with one small exception which i will update everybody about in an upcoming video um, and that's been going really well so it's a little bit hard for me to be standing over 21 pounds of strawberries being able to smell them because my sinuses have become much less inflamed. I can smell and breathe again. It looks like pizza sauce. It looks like pizza sauce, but that is a delicious strawberry sauce right there. And when I freeze them, I like to freeze them flat. So I'm going to put some cookie sheets in my freezer and try and lay these guys out flat to freeze them. It's also really important to remember to label everything. So you might think, as I do, oh, I'll know what that is. And then you find it a year later and you're like, I have no idea what that is. So I usually would write down the quantity. So we got two cups and what it is, strawberries and the date approximately, I'm just gonna put 2019. I'll label this other one as well and layer a couple more on here and then those go into the freezer like that. What have we got there? Ginormous strawberries! Well, this one's smaller and this one's ginormous. Still. Yeah, it looks like a cushion, like a whoopee cushion. Whip, whip. And a butterfly with a mohawk. Crazy! Look at you guys are really doing a lot here. Nice. And then we got all those extras. All the mush. Oh. So we have been putting two cups into each bag and now we're curious about what each bag weighs because we want to know what our 21 pounds of strawberries became. And let's switch it to pounds, oops, units, pounds and ounces. Well, you have to, you have to let go of it. One Ten. pound, oh, 1.8 ounces. Oh, it's almost two pounds. So each bag Can I is one some? pound and two ounces, which is Do I have to, like, write that on an one, eighth, one and an eighth pounds. So that's enough to make a smoothie. Oh, at least. <laughs> at least oh, like well, a big least. smoothie. There it is. Well, not this one. 
That is 14 pounds and 5 ounces approximately of strawberry puree stored away from 21 pounds of strawberries. 14 pounds, 5 ounces, and then there's a little bit left over, so we left this part here for the kids to eat. Yep. So it took me about an hour with the kids to process that 21 pounds of strawberries and then basically what we've got left over the mush that came out of the food strainer the victorio and there's uh six or seven pounds so i decided to do a little strawberry wine experiment um i'm gonna put that in this clean bucket and i will add some boiled water on top of that throw in a packet of yeast i'm gonna add six pounds of sugar and then uh, you'll just have to stay tuned to the channel maybe a few months from now maybe uh, half a year or so i'll have um, let this ferment i'll have racked it a couple times in my uh, glass carboys and we'll see what our final product is so this uh, sugar here two kilograms of sugar this was another bulk buy bonanza um, it was on sale for one dollar per bag at a local grocery chain and um, so that felt pretty weird because it's the big wild year and I'm not eating anything but wild food but I went into that grocery store and I bought 20 bags for twenty dollars it's 40 kilograms of sugar for 20 bucks um, sugar doesn't go off it's very easy to store and I knew that Eventually I would use it in a wine recipe and so this is the first time that it's kind of Paying off First time I've used it. I've had it for about two weeks So I still have a whole bunch more and I'm sure I'll have other opportunities to use it in pickling and food preserves and winemaking um, If not this year, then certainly next year But it is the big wild year so i won't be drinking that wine this year because it is not wild food um but it should have aged pretty nicely by the time 2020 rolls around maybe that'll be a new year's eve strawberry wine homemade we'll see how it turns out so i hope you liked my first um prepping video dealing with bulk foods um bulk food storage and there'll be more to come